Hi, I'm Greg, and welcome to The Gun Store in Las Vegas. Here at The Gun Store, we're here to help you where we have a huge selection of firearms. When you're in Las Vegas, stop by and see us. Guns, politics, and self-defense. That's Fired Up with Bob Irwin. Thank you for tuning in to Fired Up. I'm your host for the show, Bob Irwin, coming to you from The Gun Store in Las Vegas, Nevada. This show is all about guns, politics, and related issues of self-defense. To let our regular viewers know, our shows are now uh, archived on YouTube under Fired Up with Bob Irwin. On this edition, the panel will discuss two stories. Um, the first is a Chicago CCW holder who apparently was able to stop a ma what would have been a mass shooting uh, in Chicago just a couple of weeks ago. And the second story is a, a drawn out case about a Marine that you're all familiar with who is still in jail in Mexico, apparently for inadvertently carrying an assault rifle and a couple of pistols into Mexico. Uh, first, though, we want to talk about this case in Chicago. It, it's an, an amazing thing here. Uh, according to the Chicago Tribune, uh, on July 7th, a, a 22 year old man became agitated with a group of people who were partying in the street outside of his house. He was part of the partying, but he got annoyed. I guess there were more people than he expected and so forth, and uh, kind of went off on him. Well, as he was, uh, I mean, he was obviously a part of it. I'm not sure where, but as a small group of people were leaving the party, uh, one of the uh, attendees, a woman, noticed that there was a cup of alcohol uh, on her car, and she removed it. And at that point, this man came out very angry, screaming obscenities, threatening her, her friends, and the other party go goers that were around her. He then left, went back into his house, returned with a gun, and began firing more or less randomly, not at anybody in particular. And as he was firing, uh, while he was firing at her vehicle, a military member uh, who had a CCW pulled his gun, took cover at the other end of the car, and... So he's shooting at this guy, he gets down behind the car, and he was able to disable or injure, shoot, stop the random shooter that had started the problem. The four victims then jumped into their vehicles and were driving away. And around that time, two more people who are presently unidentified decided, hey, lots of fun, let's start shooting too. <laughs> And they start, they start shooting. One of the victims was actually struck in her back and in her arm, and she was treated at the hospital. Uh, it sounds like she's going to be okay. Apparently. Well, and, and obviously the CCW holder stopped what could have been a really mass shooting, uh, you know, or a bad Chicago pistol range, urban pistol range incident. I don't know. Urban which. pistol range. Urban yeah. pistol like range, yes. <laughs> the rules are different. Yeah, I should. Anyway, it, 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 the responding police and EMTs eventually uh, were transported to the original shooter who got hit twice. Um, he, they treated him for his wounds, and he has now, he's been booked in jail in Chicago on $950,000 bail. Um, I guess it's not appropriate to remove his drink from the roof of your car. The, uh, the other two shooters, as said, have not yet been identified. Apparently, they're just two people who randomly joined in because everybody was shooting. Gunfire is very contagious. Again, the Chicago and, Urban Pistol Range yeah. opened up, so it was, yeah. they called it Yeah, range we've talked hunt. about this before. What's going to happen is the folks who are so used to being able to intimidate others because they've been the only ones with guns for so long, there are now 30-some thousand, maybe as many as 35,000 CCW holders in Illinois now, the vast majority of them in Chicago. And... This is going to become more and more common where a lawful possessor of a firearm is going to shoot back. What killed me about this case was, aside from the local media talking about it and the gun blogs and the gun nets, we didn't hear about this, at least I didn't hear no. about this, on the mass no, media. No, definitely not. You know, we, not going to, you're not going to either. Now, no, I, I pulled this from the Chicago Tribune because normally searching for shooting cases that look appropriate for this show, I normally pull the Chicago Tribune because they have so the best ones, you know. <laughs> I mean, you can always count on them to have a good shooting or self-defense incident right. there. So that's for place, first place I look. I'm not picking on Chicago. They just... 
No, but they have so many incidents in Chicago. I'm fishing in a trout pond. Exactly, <laughs> basically. But the, the, if it had gone the other way, if this military member hadn't had a CCW and this had turned into another six or eight body incident as Chicago has become kind of well known for in certain neighborhoods, it would have made the major media another bloody weekend in well, Chicago. Uh, of course, and that's and that's the current media. That's really all they want to cover. They don't want to cover the good guy using good guy with a gun stops a bad guy. That doesn't but, fit the narrative. It, it doesn't fit the narrative. It doesn't fit the profile. It doesn't fit what they want to put out. But as the Seventh Circuit knew when they forced this issue back under the case law, good guys need guns. This is why. Yeah. So now we're having people shooting back and it will eventually result in less shootings. The, uh, the big gangbangers shooting each other, nobody's going to do much about, but they won't involve as many innocent parties when people shoot back. Crime tends to go down. That's why we have that stat that shows us basically the higher the gun density, the lower the crime rate is. Well, look at Florida back in the early 80s when they made it very easy for someone to get a CCW. They had a, a like an 80% armed robbery rate at ATMs with elderly people. It dropped in like two months to 20%. Yeah. So it's, they, the, the bad guys are aware of that, and it does reduce crime. Guns now, really how, reduce crime. How long has Chicago had the, uh, or has Illinois had the CCW law in effect now? The first CCWs were issued about three and a half months ago. Three and a half months ago. And you're having no problem finding self-defense cases out of Chicago. No, I mean there have been several. I think that there was the a only need? reason this made news <laughs> was because of the potential of it becoming a mass murder, yeah. and it was stopped. And Chicago liked it. The Tribune actually commented, "Wow, you know, he stopped a mass murder." They've probably never done that in their entire publication, but it's working, yeah. you know, and and. We'll get into that in another story a little bit later, but it, this was a good thing. It was a good shooting, and you know, you, you're just happy to see it that finally the, the bad guys have to take a look and see what they're doing, and maybe this isn't worth the risk. Because prior to this, there was no risk. Uh, we're gonna break for a few messages here. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go away. We are back here on Fired Up. Over the years, we've all heard stories about problems in Mexico if you travel there with firearms. I can't imagine there's a gun owner in the United States that doesn't know the Mexican gun laws are very, very strict, and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Uh, it's, it's the number of approvals you need to even bring sporting guns in. Well, Tony, you've done that often in your life. I've, so. I've been hunting in Mexico for 31 years, 31 years. And I can tell you for a fact that uh, you have to jump through a tremendous amount of hoops in order to bring guns down there. And I brought rifles down there and shotguns. We've gone mule deer hunting and uh, bird hunting. And usually the process is uh, this last year it was $285 for the license. You have to submit passport photos. You have to get a counselor license. You have to get an ammunition license. You have to get a hunting license. Uh, you're allowed uh, so many rounds of ammunition. And believe me, before I leave, before I go, I go through all of my pockets of all of my clothing, make sure that I don't have a 9mm empty case or a 45 empty case or any empty rifle case or military cartridge case. I mean, you, you go down there and God forbid if your serial numbers are transposed on your customs form, you know, the, fellow there, the federalities are right there with the, with the HKs right at the airport or the M16s and they check each and every little thing and it is, I mean, it, really, you go there, you're like this, you know, and then they have a, a traffic light. You, put, you push a button and it's red and, red and, and green and if it comes up red, they tear you apart. They go through every, all your luggage, if it, if it comes up green, you go right through, no problem. You know, of course they check the guns in, but I mean, if you, if you hit that red, they count every cartridge you have, every, I mean, if you, God forbid, you bring up one of our buddies, bought some beef jerky in there, that was it, they confiscated everything. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, you're, you're there and you're just terrified. Once you get in, of course, then you're, then you're subjected. Last year we got, uh, they got the state police, the federal roadblocks, the federal police, uh, the army, the municipal police, we were stopped, frisked, searched, 
several times on the way out to the fields. You know, it's, they're, they're fighting a war down there. I mean, it, obviously the drug war, but with the, you know, like I say, God forbid everything, your paperwork is correct and you, you don't have an empty 9 millimeter round in there in case any of it. <laughs> well, Scary thing. Marine reservist uh, Sergeant Andrew Tamorisi was not as lucky. No. Uh, apparently he got lost and turned into Mexico accidentally, which uh, is easier to do than you would think. Uh, we kind of discussed this off the air. Uh, however, I mean, our own government, I mean, we've talked about this before, the Fast and the Furious thing where we, you know, send the guns over there and the smuggling guns, the drug cartels. I, I don't see how they could, you know, maybe not think that there was something malicious to the fact that one of our Marines just accidentally got over there. I mean, you know, made a wrong term, but he's employed by our government and he enters Mexico with illegal firearms. I, and and how, how are you supposed to go, oh, wait, wait, so sorry, I was just supposed to go, you know, two exits back that way. That's not going to fly over in Mexico. I yeah, but think. what, the, like they say here, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And unfortunately, this, this young man, I guess, made a statement to the Mexican uh, officials that he'd never been there before. And I guess he thought that they didn't have computers in that side of the border. And he found out that, oh, sir, you have been to Mexico several times. Although I guess he'd been through on the walking port through San Ysidro and never driven there before. So that's not gonna go well. When you, when the, when the Mexican uh, law enforcement say that you've, you figure you've lied to them, that's not a good thing. And a lot of folks who travel to Mexico, and I've spent literally months and months in Mexico in that exact area in Tijuana, uh, yeah, well, it was a project. We were having a good time. So the, uh, the long and the short is it's a, it's a sovereign nation, which a lot of Americans, unfortunately, go across the board and they just assume it's just a party place to go to. They have their own laws. They're very strict laws. One of the problems is even if you're allowed to bring firearms in, you can't bring in firearms of military no. caliber. So no 223, no, no 9 millimeter, no 45. Yeah. And that's why they, they have some really interesting, the local police carry some interesting calibers because they're not even allowed to have those. The, the uh, layers of law enforcement down there are really structured. And I think what he meant when he said, I've never been here is exactly that. I've walked in, but I've never driven in. I got confused. And, and anybody who's been across the San Ysidro border, TJ, will tell you it is a very confusing thing. I'm sure what he did is he, it, when he realized he was in Mexico, he started to make that U-turn. Anybody who drives in doesn't actually go to the port of entry and tries to make that U-turn gets searched. And so he, he's down there. They're gonna they're gonna treat him as a threat to An the country. An AR-15 and two yeah. pistols. Two pistols, and, and, all yeah, military calibers. We we've, we've been trying to settle this diplomatically. What I cannot understand. Uh, I mean, 74 members of Congress wrote a letter to the judge, which was a negative. I mean, the the judge is gonna look like you know I'm influenced by U.S. Congress to make my decision. He's not gonna do what that letter says. But why are beloved president has not directly called the president of Mexico and said, look, you know, we're giving you a billion dollars in aid every week and so forth. Why don't you just pardon this guy and let him go? I don't know why that hasn't happened. I know. And all it would take, literally, I'm, like you said, a phone call. That's all. Of, I'm sure it would all it would take. It was a misunderstanding. It, I mean, obviously, it was a blatant misunderstanding. And I don't see why that he couldn't make that phone call. I mean, a Marine. I don't understand it either. It makes no sense to me. I, well, and and he's literally a phone call. But all it would be, all it would take. It's not, he's not the first U.S. serviceman to to go down there. Uh, about ten or eleven years ago, a, a National Guard, uh, active duty on duty National Guardman, made the same turn, wrong turn with a with a truck and four M16s. They released him after about 12 hours. They never, the truck is, and the M16s are now still in Mexico. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, they, he got back within about 12 hours, and I don't understand what the, there, there's, there's something going on that, you know, politics involved behind all this. And obviously, and we, we all pray that the young man will get out of there sooner or later. He's uh, in a world of hurt and needs medical attention, apparently, and uh, don't carry your guns into Mexico without jumping through the recently explained hoops Mr. D explained. Uh, that's all the time we have for this panel segment. We'll be back next week, same time, same station. We hope to see you then. Hi, I'm Gwen coming to you from the gun store in Las Vegas, where we are teaching a CCW class. 
You're watching Fired Up with Bob Irwin. Hey, this is Bob Irwin. I'm here at the Crossroads of the West Gun Show at Cashman Field in Las Vegas, one of our biggest gun shows of the year for our area. With me is the owner of National Surplus, who goes by the name JR. I, I wanted to talk to him on the air because we have a whole bunch of what they call high capacity magazines for sale here and the difficulty that that this type of business has operating where everything here is quite legal in Nevada and most states but on the East Coast and our sister in California uh, problems with trying to sell them. Uh, yeah I'm originally from California and I ended up moving out here because it's really hard to keep changing the laws uh, for magazine vendors. Uh, originally you could sell high capacity and then they went to uh, repair kits which was a high capacity magazine that was taken apart. Now it's all, only 10 rounders uh, so there's not a lot of money in that left so I had to come to Nevada uh, where you can sell all the high capacity magazines you want for assault rifles, pistols, uh, semi-auto, uh, full auto, whatever you have. Um, Nevada is uh, one of the states like Arizona, Texas where you have uh, full gun rights and uh, full freedom to buy whatever you want. Did you notice when you moved out of California they quit having the high capacity magazines that the crime weight was dropping as you were leaving? No. No? no I did not the gangbangers didn't go home? No, they came here. <laughs> no, this is the whole point. It's nobody, these magazines and what they call assault rifles, high capacity uh, guns, don't create crime. And our crime rates here are way lower than they are in California in a general sense and, and look at what's for sale here. This is America where we have the freedom to have what we want without the politicians stepping in to uh, make something illegal that has no bearing on the crime rate. And, and to be honest with you, the people that buy the high capacity magazines are family men are uh, people that take their children out to go shooting. They want higher capacity so the kids can shoot longer. That's who really buys these magazines. Uh, just because there's a few bad examples doesn't mean that's who sells it. I've been doing this for years and the people that I sell to have uh, little kids that just want to keep shooting, that enjoy shooting, that respect the sport, and that's who buys high capacity magazines. You do sell mail order. I do sell mail so order. So when you send JR an order or ask for a catalog on his website, Make sure you tell him if you live in Maryland or so forth, he won't be able to ship them into there. He can only ship them to states where they're legal. So if they're legal in your state, you might want to order this week because who knows <laughs> what will yeah. happen next week the way it's going on the East Coast. Anyway, we're going to look around a little bit of what he has and we'll be back with more Fired Up uh, after this break. Don't go away. Hi, it's Emily and I'm coming to you from the Shotgun Wedding Chapel here at the Gun Store in Las Vegas. Where you can book your Shotgun Wedding Ceremony, Vow Renewal, or Commitment Ceremony. You're watching Fired Up with Bob Irwin. Hi, this is Tony with the Gun Store in Las Vegas. We're here at Fired Up with Bob. We're going to do a very unique firearm today. This is the Barrett 50 Cal. I know that you're all, uh, everybody always likes to shoot the 50 Cal with a big boom. This is Patrick Enright here. And Patrick, give us a little history about this gun right here. This gun was sold to the Israelis about 20 years ago. It was used by the IDF for various jobs. And uh, I picked it up when it came back in country, and it's got a heck of a shockwave. Uh, we're going to take a few shots with this, and uh, it's always a big crowd pleaser here in, uh, in Big Sandy because of the big boom and the big concussion. Ready to go. Had enough? <laughs> Have you? You can actually feel the concussion. It's unbelievable. With that muzzle brake on it, standing where I'm standing, it just gets you right up into the sinus cavities. You get an instant face look. Right? Shooting in, uh, incendiary ammo does a hell of a job on the target downrange, and it's of unbelievable power. And he's hitting it every time, too.
Catch it. Very powerful gun, a lot of fun to shoot. Big crowd pleaser here. Thank you very much. You're watching Fired Up with Bob Irwin, coming to you from the gun store in Las Vegas.